the nose has been infiltrated with 1 in 80,000 adrenaline with 2% xylocaine. Care is taken not to damage the underlying medial crura and to stay superficial to the caudal edge of the medial crura. At the junction of the medial crura with the lobular segments of the middle crura, dissection enters the subperichondrial plane.
three-point counter traction helps with dissection. Once in the correct avascular plane, blunt dissection proceeds easily. At this stage, Patangi's ligament has not been divided.
At this stage, a tip timeout is taken to assess the shape, general morphology and position of the tip cartilages, particularly the domes and the lateral crura. The medial crura are marked at their junction with the lobular segments of the middle crura. This is very useful to act as a landmark later to maintain symmetry if, for example, later dissection has separated the tip cartilages. Direct subperichondrial infiltration of further vasoconstrictor and local anaesthetic is performed at this stage to help aid dissection. Again, the plan is to dissect over the cartilaginous midvault in the subperichondrial plane. The right lateral crust can be seen to be more sagittally or axially malorientated than the left. Both lateral crura are convex and both exhibit cephalic malposition, more so on the right side. Without fully separating the tip cartridges and only separating them at the domes, early dissection to find the submucopericondral plane on the septum is begun. Leaving the membranous septum intact between the medial crura at this stage helps maintain tip projection. Having the relationship between the tip defining points and the anterior septal angle at this time will help when planning the dimensions of the caudal septal extension graft. We are not planning to change tip projection in this patient and want to preserve it. The section now moves onto the superficial surface of the left upper lateral cartilage in the subperichondrial plane. Release of the scroll ligament helps facilitate this dissection as it later will proceed to the piriform aperture. The perichondrium is often more tightly bound and more difficult to elevate off the dorsum than it is off the upper lateral cartilages laterally.
The sharp end of the Daniel Shakir elevator is now used to incise through the perichondrium and periosteum junction so that dissection can then proceed in the subperiosteal plane over the bony vault. Septal cartilage is now harvested, maintaining a 15 mm caudal and dorsal septal strut. At the anterior junction between the two struts, the incision is curved as this provides better stability and less chance of a fracture than a right angled junction between the two struts. Further infiltration is used to perform hydrodissection as a decision has been made to release the lateral crura from the vestibular skin for later repositioning. The current position of each dome is marked again to allow symmetry assessment later on after manipulation of the tip cartilages. It also helps reference where the new domes might be positioned in relation to the current tip position. Sharp dissection is initially required to enter the subperichondrial plane. care must be taken to stay in the correct plane and to avoid incision through the vestibular skin.
the lateral crus and associated first accessory cartilage are now finally released from the underlying vestibular skin. The dome is also partially released from the underlying skin to help manipulation. quadrilateral cartilage is slightly concave to the patient's left. An extended right spreader graft of septal cartilage is now inserted to help straighten the quadrilateral cartilage and to fill out the concavity on the right side of the cartilaginous mid-third. The spreader graft is extended beyond the caudal edge of the septum so that it can be used to help stabilise the later caudal septal extension graft. Five zero PDS sutures are used. A cotton bud is used to measure the length of the caudal end of the septum and this will be used to inform the size of the caudal septal extension graft.
when planning the dimensions of the caudal septal extension graft, it's important to remember that the tip defining point usually extends approximately one centimeter anterior to the anterior septal angle and is also five to seven millimeters caudal to the anterior septal angle. Too small a graft and the tip will either be over rotated or under projected. The graft essentially will be mapped to the existing size of the membranous septum space. The caudal septal extension graft is inserted with an end-to-end -end relationship with the caudal edge of the quadrilateral cartilage and is stabilized using 5-0 PDS on the right extended spreader graft. The caudal septal extension graft is also sutured onto the quadrilateral cartilage itself, incorporating figure of eight sutures. Taking account of the previous markings on the medial crura to ensure symmetry, the medial crura are fixed onto the caudal septal extension graft using buried 5-0 PDS in a tongue in groove fashion. The position of the domes is now 
established on the caudal septal extension graft, allowing for a slight increase in projection with regard to the previous markings of the domes. Obliquely positioned 5-0 PDS sutures are used to establish the position of the domes and to also improve tip definition and to facilitate slight eversion of the caudal edge of the lateral crura. A cephalically placed 5-0 PDS suture is now used as a dome equalisation suture to fix the domes to the caudal septal extension graft, but also to preserve slight divergence of the caudal edge of the crura.
lateral crural steel to increase projection will bring wider lateral crusts up to the new domes. To compensate for this, a small triangular trim of the cephalic edge of the new domes is performed. This conservative trephalic trim lateral crust cartilage can be used as a tip refinement graft to fine tune contour. The graft is sutured in place with 6-0 PDS. A slight fullness of the bony dorsum along the left bony dorsal aesthetic line is refined using piezo rhino sculpture to remove bone. A chamfered and scored septal cartilage graft is used to augment the cartilaginous dorsum. To increase predictability, the graft is sutured into place and held with five zero PDS.
to correct the cephalic malposition and to prevent return of the lateral crur into the nose again, causing recurrence of their sagittal or axial malorientation, caudal pockets are made in which to transpose the lateral crura. Lateral crural strut grafts were not required to flatten the lateral crura in this case. To help maintain the caudal position of the transposed lateral crura at closure, the caudal edge of the lateral crus is incorporated into the suture closure. Suture closure is being made with 6 0 vicral rapide. Columella closure is performed with a buried 5-0 PDS suture in the midline. The remainder of the skin closure is performed with interrupted cutaneous 
7.0 Vicor Rapid. Great care should be taken to ensure good closure with the version of the corners of the columella incisions and with the lateral columella incision line. Nasal septum has been quilted with 4-0 monocryl. Before the external nasal dressing is applied, the lateral crura that have been transposed are supported with internal and external clear plastic vestibular splints, which are held loosely together with a transcutaneous loose 4-0 proline suture. This also helps close the dead space.